Hi, yeah, you're right, loves. It's me, Crudy Dench. I'm Bach. And RuPaul's Drag Race UK is Bach. So it's time for another round of scolding Yorkshire tea. Yes, literally ones of people were begging me to bring back my recap and review show of RuPaul's Drag Race UK, otherwise known as Ruppity Yuck. So why bloody not? Let's get into it. Disclaimer, I did do series one, but YouTube decided to take most of them down because they had copyright clips of the show in it, even though it was a review, which is allowed. But I'm, I'm not bringing up any beef. I'm just going to have to use less clips. You're going to see more of my face. First up, we have our beautiful haggis-shaped human, Lawrence Cheney. Oh, she looks like a beautiful Cadbury's caramel in that dress, doesn't she? And she's got that posh poodle hair like that dog in Rugrats in Paris. Oh, fabulous. Next up, we have Cherry Valentine, who's not gothy, but well, gothy. Watch your head, love. Next up, we have a fabulous performer who I know as the chair of the National Student Television Association from when I was in university. Oh God, I'm old. It's Tear Coffee. Tear Coffee is also my favorite name out of this year's bunch. Tear Coffee? T Tear Coffee? Fabulous. Next up, we have Bamini who bounces in. Oh, she's beautiful. Look at her sprinkly tits. Oh, oh, she looks just like a doll. And it makes it quite a shock when we see her out of drag. I am Bimini Bomboulash. And now, the pride of Britain. It's Ginny Lemon. <gasps> Ginny Lemon is an icon. That's all I have to say. Next in is Ellie Diamond. And oh my God, she is too talented for a 21 year old. Oh, she made that outfit and that hair. Oh, stop. Uh, I'm jealous. I'm very jealous. You can see here the producers trying to create some 100% Aberdeen Angus beef between Lawrence Cheney and Ellie Diamond, but they're busy mates, so that's not going to happen. Or is it? It probably won't. Next, tiptoeing in is my hometown gal for this season. It's Sister Sister. How are you doing, Sister? Now, what I find interesting here is out of all the girls, she seems like the meekest one, which is not normal from what we see. It's not normal. It's not normal to be meek. Shit of the meek, as Jesus once said. What I meant to say is it's not what we expect from a scouser. We normally expect them to be loud and bolshy. And even in the tennis challenge that is coming up, she's just silent. If it was me there in my scouse ways, I'd be like, are you starting me? You fucking starting with me? Don't you fucking start with me, love? Don't you fucking start with me, do you poor throwing balls at me face? But I'm not there, so I'm not doing that. Yet. Roll out that red bloody carpet, because up next, we have a superstar in Tace. I saw her a couple of years ago in her upstairs, and immediately became obsessed. I think she's gonna go very far in this competition. Loved the entrance look with the painted jacket. This is everything. Sauntering in next, we have the cabaret icon, Joe Black. Everyone in the UK who knows their UK drag knows who Joe Black is. She is the queen to beat. I'm feeling very numb. Next up, we have Kylie Minogue, followed by Astina Mandela in a lovely pair of office blinds. Rude. Those who know their UK drag will know that Astina and Bamini are involved in Sink the Pink, so are very adept to that large stage performance, dancing, putting on spectacular shows. It's going to be great to see them lip sync throughout this series. Or maybe they won't. Maybe they'll be too bloody good. <laughs> And finally, bringing up the rear, we have a horror, a horror, a horror. She's a fashion designer. It's fashion. Is it? Fa <laughs> Wait, what is it? Fashion. It's fashion. <laughs> I do love this entrance look. I think it's fabulous. It'll be very exciting to see what she does with a crafty challenge. After a little room mail, he's frack, frack, frack again. It's RuPaul. <laughs> How awful for the environment. We also have our first look at the Brit crew. Oh, Prince Harry isn't doing well after Megxit, is he? Oh. As he introduces the first mini challenge, which is a wimble. 
Golden theme. The girls have to put on a sexy photo shoot whilst being pummeled with various tennis apparatus. This is not only a physical challenge, but also a mental challenge as they deal with the haunted memories of doing PE in high school. Balls! 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 Oh, there's so, there's so many jokes about balls, isn't there? I'm saying the jokes are a little lazy. Like, there's loads you could have done. Strawberries and cream, cream yourself. I want to ride your Murray Mount. Hire me as a writer, RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Come on, Ruppity Hook. Hire Crudy Dench. The winner of the mini challenge is Lawrence Cheney, for some reason. I, what's the criteria for this photo challenge? Who knows? They're all just having a nice time. And so the maxi challenge is revealed. They have to walk the runway dressed in a homage to a British gay icon. Wait a minute. <gasps> There's a twist again. It's like last year there was a twist. <gasps> what's the twist? A look that shows me why you are the queen of your hometown. A second outfit. So the girls run and get their luggage. I never get this bit. Why, why are you running? What's the rush? Somebody got crack in the bag? What's going on? Like, I get the running if they release, I don't know, like, a thousand killer bees onto the set. Again, RuPaul's Drag Race producers hire me. Lawrence takes a while to take his face off because he says he feels ugly out of drag, which I think is a real shame. I have no idea what that feels like. Here's a photo of me out of drag. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tace and Estina are having a conversation about the lack of gay icons who are people of colour. And I have to agree, like, we are just not doing enough to raise the profiles of black and brown queer icons. Whilst I'm here, check out this article about Tony Britz, one of the UK's forgotten black gay icons. It's a really interesting read. I'll link it down below. And we have the setup for a little drama here as three of the queens bitch about who they think is shit. Is a horror going to be the villain of the series? Yes. The IKEA paper lanterns are back and flashing away as we see RuPaul sashay down the runway. And oh my god, she looks great. Oh, Joseph in his technicolor petticoat. Oh, it's amazing. Judges this week are Michelle Graham, or as he's known in America, Graham, and the beautiful Elizabeth Hurley. Absolutely beautiful. First up for judging, we have UK icon, my favourites here. Ellie Diamond as Lily Savage. I thought this was spot on, beautiful, very well done. Done a scow scow proud. I actually really liked Joe Black's David Bowie look. I thought this screamed David Bowie. Michelle clearly can't see anything out of those bloody swimming goggles she's got on. Going to swimming baths after this to get her Frosty's 10 metre badge. You go girl. Yes, it does look a bit like if you left a David Bowie doll on a radiator for half an hour, but I still liked it. My dislikes for this runway are horror. It looks like she fell into a donation bag for Bloody Bernardo's and was like, hmm, this'll do. Uh, excuse me, lady. Then we move on to the queen of their hometown. My tops for this runway are Ellie Diamond again, I thought was brilliant. Great reference with Dennis Menace. And Lawrence Cheney, I thought both Scottish queens really brought it to this particular runway. And Astina, I, I really got what she was going for. And it was really nice to see a big difference between the two different outfits. I thought that was very clever to play each outfit off each other like that. My dislikes for this particular runway? I love it a bit, but taste. What's going on? That dragon looks like when the nan you don't like gets your sequin art for Christmas because she doesn't know what to get you. Now, if this was UK Gay Icon, sequin art absolutely can. But not for this one. I'm sorry. I thought it looked bad. The girls who are safe go back into the workroom and there is very little drama, which I don't mind. Like, it's just nice. Just taste saying, Grunchy, munchy, thirsty, kirsty. They try to build up a little bit of drama with a horror, but they're all just having too much of a nat time to think about it. Also, what in the Weatherspoons cocktail is that? Is that just Robinson's squash in there, is it? Back on the main stage, the winner of this week is Astina, and in the bottom two, we have Joe Black and Bamini. Now, this might be a little bit surprising because they're both, you know, 
very good performers but i can kind of see where the judges are coming from with joe's dress it's you know it's a bit creased let's be honest looking at it it needs a good steaming we're really nitpicking at this point point. and with bimini again the cut of the outfit just didn't seem quite right i would have gone maybe with like a little cute pair of shorts and then maybe a smaller shoe with a thick like football sock going right up the thigh i mean this is me giving fashion advice and i'm wearing an asos dress which is apparently enough to win a challenge. <laughs> the lip sync is the iconic song Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Really nice choice for the first episode. Bamini's really going for it. Look at that strain. It's like she's popping out a hemorrhoid. Oh, both of them are really giving it what they've got. But by the end, Joe Black sort of looks like he's given up a little bit. Like I didn't really get the shtick that he had going on with one bit of the lip sync. Like it just sort of fell a little bit flat. And so Pamini is safe and Joe Black goes home back to his day-to-day -day life of frightening small children underneath Brighton Pier. Overall, I thought this was a really good episode. I was really giddy throughout, mostly just to see queens that, again, I, I know, I've heard of, I've seen before. It's a really vibrant cast that shows the true talent and variety of drag that the UK has to offer. It was very similar in formula to the first episode of the first series, but if you can, you know, treat that as the pilot series and then see this series, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You hear that, Drag Race US? Huh? You love it, don't you, huh? That's it from me. If you've liked what you've heard or seen or experienced throughout this short video, then please follow me on my various social medias. It's at Crudy Dench. It's Crudy with an I, like Trudy, but a little bit more crude. Please share this video with your friends if you think they'd enjoy it. I'm hopefully going to do more um and subscribe as well i'm not looking after this youtube channel but you know subscribe hit my bell and whatever and i'll see you next time for some more unsolicited opinions from me crudy dench in yorkshire tea mm. what a dusty cup oh you can see the dust flying off that bloody hell